Hello everyone, welcome to another language course that I'm going to do, which this time instead of doing Python, I'm going to do C++, because why not? It's pretty epic. So C++ is a much more base language, as in it's a lower level, and so it will be much more difficult to learn, but I have experience with C Sharp, which is not so epic but it's still epic um so the c++ language is very powerful apparently and uh, it can do a lot of stuff so let's just learn all this stuff shall we it'll prove pretty cool um let's go with the introduction i've already read through the introduction actually but we might as well just go through it with you guys just be pretty cool Okay, compilers. The essential tools needed to follow these tutorials are a computer and a compiler toolchain able to compile C++ code and build the programs to run on it. C++ is a language that has developed much over the years and these tutorials explain many features added recently to the language. Therefore, in order to follow, no, properly follow the instructions, no, I can't read, to properly follow the tutorials, a recent compiler is needed. It shall support, even if only partially, the features introduced by the 2011 standard. Many compiler vendors support the new features at different degrees. See the bottom of this page for some compilers that are known to support the features needed. Some of them are free. Wait, some are not free? That's not good. Um, for, if for some reason you need to use some older computer you can access an older version of these tutorials here no longer updated okay what is a compiler computers understand only one language and that language consists of sets of instructions made of ones and zeros this computer language is appropriately called machine language a single a symbol no a single instruction into a computer could look like this so memory location zero and binary, I don't know what that is, but it holds a bit of data, but whatever. Um, or instruction. In particular, computers, a machine, a, par a particular computer's machine language program that allows a user to input two numbers, adds the two numbers together, and displays the total could include these machine code instructions. I'm not going to be able to understand this. As you can imagine, programming a computer directly in machine language using only ones and zeros is very tedious and error prone. To make programming easier, high level languages have been developed. High level programs also make it easier for programmers to inspect and understand each other's programs easier. This is a portion of code written in C that accomplishes the, the, accomplishes the exact same code, or exact same purpose. So we have int a, b, and sum, then c in. I think that means C input goes to A, and then C input, and not the next one goes to B. Then the variable sum is A plus B, and then C out as an output will be passed into. Oh, that's pretty epic! So apparently, we can do two ways. Okay. So that allows a little bit more flexibility. Usually you only have an equal sign when you're doing any of these. Or when you're doing C out, you usually have a, um, you know, you usually use parentheses to p give things to methods. But in this case, it's uh, doing a, using the, uh, the double greater than symbols or double less than symbols. The top one is greater than, the bottom one is less than. Um, and then also being passed in is end L, which I'm guessing means end line. Even if you cannot really understand the code above, which I was actually able to do that because I'm an actual bouse, um, you should be able to appreciate how much easier it will be to program in the C++ language as opposed to machine language. Because a computer can only understand machine language and humans wish to write in high level languages, high level languages have to be rewritten, translated in other words, into machine language at some point. This is done by special programs called compilers, interpreters, or assemblers that are built into the various programming applications. 
C++ is designed to be com to be a compiled language, meaning that it is generally translated into machine language that can be understood directly by the system, making the generated program highly efficient. For that, a set of tools are required are needed, sorry, known as the development tool chain, wh whose core are a compiler and its inker or linker, sorry. No idea what a linker is. Console programs. Console programs are programs that use text to communicate with the user and the environment, such as printing text to the screen or reading input from a keyboard. Console programs are easy to interact with and generally have a predictable behavior that is identical across all pl platforms. They are also simple to implement and thus are very useful to learn the basics of a programming language. The examples in these tutorials are all console programs. Epic. Well, we're going to be working with a console program mostly as well. Um, I'm going to do the exact same goal as try that we did tr trying to do with um, Python. So I'm going to be doing both of these languages. So I'm going to be doing the extremely high level language, which is absolutely barbaric and the low level language which is disciplined and powerful but is so much more advanced so you need to be big brain to understand the stuff you see python developers are so small brain they use barbaric to tools they're just they're just so uncivilized <laughs> but anyway uh as you can already tell i am obviously on the side I, I wonder if there's actually a flipping war going on, like, if you remember that stupid thing where it's green gang versus purple gang. In this case, it's just gonna be flipping base gang versus high gang, or whatever they are, I don't know. Low level gang versus high level gang, there you go. Um, the easiest way... no, I need to do the other one here. Uh, the way to compile console program depends on the particular tool you are using. The easiest way for beginners to compile C++ programs is by using an integrated development environment. I have one already set up over here. I'm going to get rid of that thingamajig. Don't need that. And here we are. Adam, just open a new one. Uh, I can get rid of the... Well, first of all, let's check for packages. Because the thing is, we may not actually have the um run code interactively inspect data and plot right okay uh so basically we we need i already have the one the um okay okay i'm i'm okay so install packages look at the install packages that we have so far or i have so far on the atom the reason I'm using Atom and not the entire Visual Studio, which I do have on my Windows side, is that I have, I'm right now running Ubuntu Studio, a very good Linux OS. It is so big brain that no one else really uses it that much. It's very good for anything really. So that's all, you know, just Atom. But anyway, uh, I have the GPP compiler which is, you know, the compile and run C and C++ within Atom. Incredible. But I wonder if there's anything else we need. Probably not. You know, I'm just... Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? There you go. You Now you guys know what you're going to need. You're going to need that. What are these? Editor settings. Atomic soft tabs. I'm not going to not gonna touch any of that. Um... So wait, uh, let me show you it to you again in case you guys need to know what this is. So it is GPP hyphen compiler version 3.07. That's the one I have. It's the most downloaded compiler by Criss Cross 07. Criss Cross 07, you are epic. Anyway, um, next. Oh yeah, by the way, the actual thing I'm making right now, it's... Um, what we're going to use is, we're, sorry, we're going to make a text-based, turn-based RPG. So we're going to be making a turn-based fight game-ish. And then maybe we can incorporate very advanced mechanics. Uh, you know what, go ahead and put in the comment section 
What kind of mechanics would be epic for this game? Even put it for the Python as well, the Python one. We'll, we'll do them both. We'll do it for both. Maybe that will make things really, really good. Anyway. Uh, here we have instructions on how to compile and run console programs using different fully integrated development interfaces. That's inter its environment. But anyway, IDEs. Um, code blocks. These are IDEs. These are proper IDEs. Visual Studio Ex Express. Uh, yeah, um, these are proper IDEs. What I have is quite frankly just a text editor which can be slightly bumped up. So right now I actually, um, I mean, I have a more powerful OS, but the editor is not so powerful. However, in Windows, the OS is weak. Anyway, um, you can just have a look at that if you want on your own time. The best way, or you can just pause the the, uh, the video. Sorry. Um, the best way to learn a programming language is by writing program. Typically, the first program beginners write is a program called Hello World, which simply prints Hello World to your computer screen. Although it is very simple, it contains all the fundamental components of C++ programs have. Okay. Uh, so we have just a comment here. That's pretty normal. As you can see, we're using two forward slashes, not the hashtag that is used in Python because we are civilized gentlemen or gentle or, or lady sorry uh, gentlemen or ladies who prefer to be actual uh, disciplined programmers this is just you know including streams that's that's fine that we're, we're allowed to use hashtags for other purposes except for comments um, the left panel shows C++, pro no, C++ code for this program. The right panel shows the result when the program is executed by a computer. The gray numbers to the left of the panels are line numbers to make discussing programs and researching errors easier. They are not part of the program. Epic. Um, well, obviously, because we have them here as well. See? One. Um, line one. My first C++ now my, my first program is C++. Two slashes indicate the rest of the line is co a comment inserted by the programmer which but which has no effect on the behavior of the program. Programmers use them to include short explanations or observations concerning the code or program. In this case, it is a brief introductory description of the program. Epic. Line 2. Include and then less than symbol IO stream greater than symbol. Uh, lines beginning with a hash sign are um, directives read and interpreted by what is known as a preprocessor. Epic. They are special lines interpreted before the compilation. Did I say that right? Compilation? Compilation? I don't know. Um, before the compilation of the program itself begins. In this case, the directive um, hash include um, IO stream instructs the preprocessor to include a section of standard C++ code known as header IO stream that allows to perform standard input and output operations such as writing the output to of, writing the output of this program to the screen. Right, we're going to be using include IO stream a lot. I mean, we're going to be using only once, but like you know, we're going to be accessing it quite a lot. Um. A blank line, yeah, it's, it's normal. It's just a blank lines have no effect on the program. They simply improve the readability of the code. Don't be afraid of using blank lines. Use them. They make things so good. They can make really good. Okay, what, I just looked ahead and I just saw friendship and inheritance. I understand inheritance, but what's friendship? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, line four, int main. This line initiates the declaration of a function. Um, why is it int main? What? Why? Uh, uh, but 
it's not returning me. Okay, maybe C sharp C sharp works different. Yeah. Even in Java, that's weird. What is this? Okay, the reason I'm saying this is because for you well-bred programmers out there, you probably know that functions work like this. For example, in C sharp, we do this. So imagine, um, okay, imagine this is just a class. So let's just be using uh, system, and that's pretty much all we need. And then let's make, let's, let's do it, let's declare a class in C sharp. So class, uh, let's just call this base. Or actually no, we'll play player. We'll call this player, okay? We're gonna open some code blocks. I'm gonna beautify, please. If it will work, I think I crashed it. Did I crash it? No, I didn't, okay. Thank God, okay, that's weird. Why won't you let me? Okay, I'm gonna. Well, it's fine. It's fine. Indent it. So in the class player, let's just say we have a few things. Um, private. You'll know why I'm doing this private. There's something called encapsulation. Private. Let's make him have health. No, private int. Sorry, private int health. And we're going to end that here. And let's make a property for that. Public int health. Nope, that's uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to do this because I am not a barbarian. And this will also have uh, get. <coughs> return health and then set uh, health equals value okay so now we have a property for it let's make a method Let's make any method. Let's just say uh, heal. <clears throat> so we'll make a public um, void. Public void uh, heal. Can I please uh, enter? There we go. Enter you as well, and let's just say uh, health equals health plus nope pl no, plus there nah, plus ten, and let's just say we'll make another one public void damage this time and this time our player will take damage so uh, health equals health no not that one it's private remember uh, health plus 10 Okay, so that's pretty epic. This is just a normal class. Uh, you see, this is a class. It's not a program yet. It's just, it's a blueprint. This is a blueprint of code, which is fine. But look here. Uh, okay, actually, let's do, let's make one more thing. Mm. Okay, let's let's do this. I want to give this guy a name. Private string 
name. I can't type. And let's give him the property for one as well. Uh, I'm going to make another space there because I like spacing. Can I speak? Pu please. Public. Uh, wait, I need to there we go, indent that. Public string name. Open the code blocks and put that down there. And then that name. Nope, that's not it. It's get. Open those. Mm, nope. Return underscore name. Close that. What will happen here? No, underscore. I hit the wrong one. Nope, wrong. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I don't need. Yeah, I, it's just convention. I always do that. Wait, I don't. I do a tab, isn't it? Yeah, it's tab. It's a tab around these. It's convention, really. Because we are civilized men and ladies. Set. Tab on that. And name equals value okay what you've just seen right now is me going on an absolute rampage on coding or programming okay I know this looks like a lot to take in bear with me I'll explain this all to you okay I will I will be your tutorial First of all, let's look at this. Um, public static. I need to make this real quick because this is what I'm needing to show you. Public static void um, main. Open code blocks, and here we are. Mm. So look at this. Right now, what I have is just a using system. Using system is normal. That's that's basically the basic stuff that you will need for any program in C sharp, at least. Now, this is quite frankly the C sharp and Java equivalent of int main. The reason I got so confused is the fact that there is an int here. What you may well have noticed is that there is an int here. Now, this int doesn't really matter. Right now, we're just instantiating something here. But over here, we have an int that is being returned. This is okay. Um, this is a property. Okay, let's slow down. Let's explain to you how a program works. First of all, a program, every single time you start a program, you start by a command. That command in every single program usually is the main method the main method is called every single time a program first starts and everything in this is executed firstly um let's just tell you i can do this player P uh, one or player one equals new player. Now the epic thing about this is that you may have noticed that player is being recognized. How is it being recognized? 
It's being recognized because there is a class called player. Now you see, this is something about object-oriented programming. Let's slow down even more, shall we? Whenever you're making any program, you type in what stuff is. You can, you can, you can make things like int. Int means integer, integer value. So you can make a variable. A variable is basically a bit in memory. So your computer has RAM. RAM is it's memory. That's it. That's it. It really is. If you know the way. Whenever I okay, imagine this. I'm gonna ask you right now to remember the number six. Now, in another place, remember the number four. Add those two numbers together. Now, give me what those two numbers are. No, what the um, sum is, sorry. The, 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 num the two numbers that you just added together, give me the result of it. Now, that equivalent is quite frankly just this. Actually, no, we're not doing C out anymore. This is, uh, um, I was doing C out because I was thinking that way we're doing C++, but no, we're, we're going back to uh, C sharp. So it's console dot right line. And we're doing A plus B. And also we're going to make, well, we I don't know if you have to, but we're just going to do it anyway. Uh, convert dot to string, open that, there we go. Nope, that didn't work, there, there we go. So what you've just seen is an absolute absurdity. I know, bear with me. So. I've just given you the task of, you know, remembering two numbers. Well, the way a computer remembers anything is via RAM. RAM is almost like a library. It's a library that changes every single day depending on what you're doing. No, not even every single day, every single millisecond. That library is being moved around with books being thrown here and there, all of them having some kind of information like having any inf information, mainly in binary code. So the thing is, your brain works in a similar way. It's quite frankly a library, except in this case, a computer, while, it can, while your brain, your brain uses synapses and etc. it uses a combination of neurons. Every single combination of neurons represents a certain memory. In this case, instead of having combinations of neurons, it's actually a combination of switchboards. A combination of switchboards sounds weird, but imagine this. This is computer science now, not programming, but here we go. A lesson in computer science. Give me one second, will you? Sorry about that, I am back. So, um, so yeah, a small lesson on computer science. So, when you have a RAM, I told you it's a switchboard, right? So, imagine a board with a eight wires. Give me a second. Sorry guys about that. I am back. Now, where was I? I was away for like, what, half an hour? Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I was on... Uh... Right. How programming works. 
So, I've told you about how the main myth actually comes in. So, it just it's, it's a thing that gets called every single time a program is run. It's a thing that's first run. run. Let me tell you why I got confused. A method usually has a return type. For example, in this class here, there is this <clears throat> which is a property, but it means that it handles the type int. This is a method. It doesn't handle any type or it doesn't return anything. Returning means, uh, so for example, if I do this, um, console.readline, what this will do is return what is on the console. So, if, I, if it returns something, or it's even used here. So this will return what is there. Wait, can I compile? How do I compile things? Yeah. Right, okay. Um anyway, So yeah, um, it, it, this returns something. Okay, so sorry, I got blanked out for a second. So w when a method is called, which in this case the method read line is called, it returns what is on the console. It, re it returns the latest line on the console. In this case, this is just execution. There is no returning at the end of this. Why is there a return here? Mm, why? Well, it's a function. Not a, I mean, but a function and a method are the same things, right? Actually, no, functions are slightly different from methods. Uh, at least in C sharp. Hmm. All right. Well, let's continue. This line indicates, you know, initiates the declaration of a function. Essentially, a function is a group of code statements which are given a name. In this case, this gives the name main to a group of code statements that follow. Functions will be discussed in later in detail in a later chapter, but essentially their definition is introduced with a succession of type int. What? Oh wait, no, never mind. With succession of a type, and then a name. Okay, so then the int. So you can change that to anything you want. But why is the main int? Um, I don't know. Why can't you make it void? Won't void work better? Unless void doesn't exist in C plus plus. I don't know. Uh. Okay, next. The function named main is a special function in all C++ programs. It is a function called when the program is run. The execution of all C++ programs begin with the main function, regardless of where the function is actually located within the code. Okay, um... Lines... Five and seven. Five and seven. B. Wait, where's five and seven? Yeah, five and seven. Um, the open brace at line five indicates the beginning of the method's main function definition, and the closing brace at line seven indicates its end. Everything between these braces is the function's body that defines what happens when the main is called. All functions use braces to indicate the beginning and end of their definitions. And the STDC out. This is, this line 
is a C++ statement. A statement is an expression that can actually produce some effect. It is the meat of the program specifying its actual behavior. Statements are executed in the same order that they appear within a function's body. The statement has three parts. First, std um, shiza or crap. Uh, I just realized what I just said. And I do not like it. Yeah. Someone else can say that, not me. Um, anyway, the std C out, which identifies the standard, which, sorry, which identifies a standard character output device. Usually this is the computer screen. Second, the insertion operator. Why does everything have to sound so messed up? Which uh, the double uh, less than symbols, which indicates that, no, which indicates that what follows is inserted into the std count or the count or the c out. Um, finally, a sentence with in quotes, which in this case, hello world, is the content inserted into the standard output. Um, notice that the statement ends with a semicolon. This character marks the end of a statement, just as the period ends a sentence in English. All C++ statements must end with a semicolon character. One of the most common syntax errors in C++ is forgetting to add a end, forgetting to end a statement with a semicolon. Funny thing is that that's actually never happened to me before. Somehow. semicolons everywhere. Anyway, uh, next. You may have noticed that not all the lines of this program perform actions when the code is executed. There is a line containing a comment and there is a line with a directive for the preprocessor beginning with hashtag. There is a line that defines a function in this case the main function and finally a line with this with a statement's ending with a semicolon, the insertion into C out, which was within the block delimited by the braces of the main function. But the program has been structured in different lines and properly indented in order to make it easier. Wait, did I say but? No, sorry. The main, the, the, the program has been structured in different lines and properly indented in order to make it easier to understand for the human beings, no, for the humans reading it, but C++ does not have, stru have strict rules on indentation or how to split instructions in different lines. For example, instead of, instead of uh, this, like what I do, he could have written it as this. This is fine, but only when you're doing this. Only. This is the only exception I will allow. If you do this with anything else, I will hunt you down. Anyway, uh, well, obviously I'm not going to hunt you down, but I will despise you. But um, so we could have written that all in a single line, and this would have had exactly the same meaning as the preceding code. In C++, the separation between statements is specified with an ending semicolon with the separation into different lines not mattering at all for this purpose. Many statements can be written in a single line, or each, statements can have a, each statement could have a line or be in a line in, of its own. Um, the division of code in different lines serves only to make it more legible for schematic and sch more legible and schematic for humans that may read it, but it has no effect on the actual behavior of the program. Epic. Let's add an additional statement to our first program. Okay. And then here is the the demonic way of reading it or, or, or typing it. Uh, 
I'm just going to skip that. Uh, source code could have also been divided into more code lines instead. <clears throat> um, this is slightly less demonic because I still understand what you mean, but mm, it's not epic. It's it's not it's not epic. But you know what? There will be situations where this may actually be slightly, just ever so slightly acceptable. Where this may actually feel a little bit better. And the results, and the result would again have been exactly the same as the pre, as in the previous examples. Preprocessor directives, those that begin with a hashtag, are out of this general rule since they are not statements. They are lines uh, read and processed by the preprocessor before proper compilation pr begins. Preprocessor directives must be specified in their own line, and um, because they are not statements, do not have to end with a semicolon. Epic. Also, a notification just came off my phone. Give me one second to make it shut up. Uh, there we go. And next, comments. I am not going to go over comments, but you, you can read them because they're not going to be important right now. The namespace S. I almost said it. The namespace stud. Or the stud. I'm going to call it stud. The namespace stud. <clears throat> if you have seen C++ code before, you may have seen C out being used instead of the stud um, colon colon C out. Both the name, b both name the same object. The first one uses its unqualified name C out, while the second qualifies it directly within the namespace stud. C out is part of the standard library, and all its elements in the standard C++ library are um, declared in, within what is called a namespace, the namespace stud. In order to re refer to the elements in the stud namespace, a program shall either qualify each and every use of the of elements in the li of the library, as we have done by prefixing see out with stud colon colon or introduce visibility of its components the most typical way is to the most typical way to introduce visibility of components is by means of using declarations so <coughs> mostly um everything in okay so in c sharp you have seen me do the using system that is quite frankly the exact same thing Whoops, wrong one. As the stud in C++. Epic. Variables and types. <clears throat> These are basic stuff. I'm just going to skip over this. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, all right. These are standard. Okay. Standard reserved keyboards that cannot be used for programmer created identifiers are okay so we're, we're, we're not going to be using these a lot really we're, just, we're fine it's fine uh okay very important c++ language is a sensitive language that means an identifier with written in capital letters is not equivalent to in another one with the same name but written in small letters thus for example the result variable is not the same as the result variable or the result variable it's really hard to distinguish between when you're just speaking it. These are three different identifiers identifying, identifying three different variables. Okay, that is fine because that's the exact same thing as Java and uh, C plus no C sharp. Fundamental data types. This is the stuff that we need. Okay, character types. You have car. <coughs> um, exactly one byte in size, at least eight bits. Uh, not smaller than car, at least sixteen bit. Uh, so the car 16 yeah, T not smaller uh, than car T at least 32 bits what okay oh it's precision right okay and okay so I think apparently some of them are a bit too big maybe some characters require slightly more 
like uh, if you're going off the Latin scale and you're going somewhere else, then you you might need character sixteen or thirty two, and then W car represent the largest supported character set. Epic. Integer types signed so signed car wait. Signed. Same size car, at least eight bits. Okay, I'm not sure what signed are. Same size as assigned counterparts, okay. And then we also have, okay, so short, int, long, long, long. Cool. Um, floating point types, so we have float, double, long, double. And then we have boolean type, void type. That's, you see, that's the thing, no storage. You don't have to return anything. Void and null pointer. Decal type. Null PTR. Okay, that's weird. We're not going to be using this one anyway. The names of certain integer types can be abbreviated without their assigned an int component. Only the part not in italics is required to specify the type. Okay. Um, the part in italics is optional, i.e. signed short int can be abbreviated as signed short, uh, short int, um, or simply short. They all identify the same fundamental type. Epic. Within each of the groups above, the difference between types is only their size, i.e. how much they occupy memory. The first type uh, in each group is the smallest with the last type and the last type is the largest with each type being as least at, as large as the one predecessing it in the same group other than that the types in the in a group have the same properties note in the panel above that other than car which has size exactly one byte none of the fundamental types has a standard size specified but a minimum at most Okay, um, therefore the type is not required, in, and in many cases is not, uh, This exactly this minimum size. This does not mean that these types are of undetermined size, but there are no standard size across all compilers and machines. Each compiler implementation may specify the sizes of for, no, for these types that fit the best, or no, fit the best, they fit the best the architecture where uh, okay that's a bit weird fit the best the architecture where the program is going to run okay anyway this rather generic size specification for types gives C++ language a lot of flexibility to be adapted to work optimally in all kinds of platforms both, both present and future this size, no, this type sizes above are expressed in bits. The more bits a type has, the more distinct values it can represent, but at the same time, also consumes more space and memory. Unique representable values. Eight bits can hold something like that, okay. 16 bits can hold something like that. 32 bits can hold something like that. 64 bits can hold something Jeez, we're not going to be using things like that. We're going to be mainly using just 16 bit. Let's make, you know what? Let's be actual. We're going to be epic programmers and make this really, really good. We're going to make this exactly. So we're going to try and use as much as we can 8 bits and 16 bits. What are those integer types? Signed car. So we need signed car, okay. Yeah, we'll use that. I'm not sure what they are though. What's, what's the difference between signed and unsigned? Right, I'm gonna real quick check. Difference between Signed 
and unsigned int. Uh, unsigned int, and wait, an, an unsigned int is an integer that can that <coughs> cannot be negative and thus has higher range of positive values. I can assume signed. Oh, right. How did I not see this? I'm an idiot. <coughs> okay. Well, that's that's epic. Next. Declaration of var variables. <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna make this file available to you guys. I'm gonna rename this in case you guys want to have a look at this. I'm gonna rename this. Uh, random code use at your own risk there you go that's epic what no such file rename i don't get it what's wrong oh right am i not supposed to use those what That works. Okay. So why can't I can rename again? Ren Dom code. No such file or directory rename. Why can't you do that? It's because I'm using capitals. Okay, now that just kind of sucks. Oh great, I broke something. Oh god. broke something it's it's fine give me a second Wait, did I not even save it? Is that why? Save. Cancel. Okay, hang on.
Can I please make a new thing? Okay, I got it to work again. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna save that there, and I'll make it available to you guys later on. For some reason, it's now broken here, which kind of sucks. Uh, don't save that. Okay, uh, but it's fine. There's nothing wrong. It's fine. It's it's epic. It's actually epic. Why is this an LMS? Oh no, it's not an LMS. It's fine. Okay, it's epic. It's epic. It's completely epic. Don't worry, this works. Trust me. Okay, so next. I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's add new folder C plus plus R P actually no. We'll just make it C++ and in it we're going to make a new, no wait, uh, crap, hang on, we're going to add a new folder inside it, new folder, uh, We'll call it RPG, yeah. RPG game. Or we'll just call it RPG. We'll make that as a project folder. Close that off. And we will get rid of this. Remove project folder. Now we have a project folder. Let's do this. New file. Let's call this. Um, we'll just call this main. Actually, no, we're going to call this RPG start. Uh, why is it not opening? Is it being made in the back? Did I, or did I just hit cancel like an actual idiot? RPG. Wait, yeah, I'm an idiot. I think I added it here. Or somewhere. Is it in the file system? In the bin? I don't know. I've done something. Don't like it. Alright, I'm gonna add it in here. RPG start. Let's do this. So this is just normal, okay, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of this, I'm sorry. To see what variable declarations look like in action within a program, let's have a look at the entire C++ code of the example about your mental memory proposed at the beginning of this chapter. So that's just normal adding up. Yeah, that's fine, it's easy enough. So that's how you actually start the 
program. Okay. Let's do that, shall we? So we're gonna need an include. So uh, where's the hash? Include. Ah. Right. How do we make a C? Okay. So C. What is it called? C plus plus. Uh. File type. Forgot what file type it is. Yeah, is it CS? CPP. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. Dot CPP. Include. Oh yeah, there you go. Now it's starting to show. Uh, right. I didn't even know. Didn't mention what I need to include. Uh, IO stream. Wait, did it show up here. Uh, no, no. Uh, IO stream. Close that. Next. Public. Stat. Wait. I'm an idiot. It's just int, isn't it? Can I make a void? Yeah, void. Main. Void into main. What the flip? Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave that. Also, that is demonic. Thank you. You can go die. Whoops. And just get rid of that. There we go. Now, let's start. Also, the usings. We're going to be using the... Um, what was it again? The, uh, the stud. So, next. Um... Let's start with just see outs, shall we? So we're going to be telling the user, you we're going to do the same thing as Python. You stumbled across a random mutated mushroom. You nope, actually, uh, you uh, have stum uh, stumbled across a random. Mutated mush. No, that's not how I spell mushroom. Mushroom. Fight it. Actually, I wonder if escape characters work. Mushroom and then new line. Does it work? I saw something there. Okay, it should work. Yeah, it works. Um. Fight it to live there next um, we we'll start with a while you see the thing what I'm doing right now is uh, I want to make sure that they're ready to play so what I'm gonna do is just say press or uh, hit or type go sorry type go to start so in the while loop I'm gonna real quick do this while actually no first of all I need to make boo go and then in here I'm gonna say while go open the code brackets code blocks and be civilized about this please stop jumping around there we go uh, while go um see out um, type go to start. No, nope. and then it will do. Uh, is it C in? Yep, C in this way. Yep, C in. String response. Next, um, if and here, res 
response equals go or response equals go in case they're, they want to do uppercase as well then we are going to do go equals false I forgot the semicolon looks like this is the first time I've actually done that that should work as a normal thing right okay let's compile this real quick let's just let's just compile and debug could not be spawned is it installed on your system oh something happened could not be spawned is it installed on your path if so please open an issue on the package spawning the process what happened Right. What about compile and run? Let's just compile this and run it. Could not be spawned again. <clears throat> right, so pl the plugin kind of sucks, but it's fine. Uh, this thing is whole is actually I think I can just run. Okay, hang on. Uh, running no compiling. See, the Linux operating system is built on C++. So, I think this should be a compiler. So, to compile, yeah, it's such an Ubuntu, you will need to install. Huh. I need to install a compiler. Right. Okay, um I'm gonna just do this. Give me a second. Right, so I found out that I already have it installed. I checked the verify ins installation. Looks like I actually don't need this. So how do we actually compile it? Use any one of the following syntax to compile the program. CC program, okay. Or GCC. Or uh, exist, make. Okay. Okay, here we go. So let's do this then. Okay, um, let's open up my bash. Wrong one. Well, it's actually not bash anymore. Is it called bash? I don't know. My Unix operating system. Okay, we'll open up terminal. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do. So we're in here. CD uh, user. No. No such file or directory. Where are we? We're uh, we're not. We're all the way here. Why are we here? Oh, let me go. Maybe make me go to. Where's my file? There. File manager. Get over here. <clears throat> so we are in documents. Copy that. And paste it there. I want the black background. Crap, I forgot. I need to do CD. So, uh, CD.
here we are now we're in documents um cdc plus plus and cd rpg nope and now we need to go and compile that thing so <coughs> sorry is it gpp or g cc gcc or cc so we'll just do cc cc rpg start no such follow director okay no such file or directory okay i think i didn't save it that's why save oh right i didn't press uh, cp dot cpp i'm an idiot <clears throat> so cc rpg nope start dot cpp and can i execute c plus no c c o plus <clears throat> okay, we can do G C C R P G Nope Start Dots uh C P P <coughs> No such file or directory Compilation terminated. Why does it not want to run it? Is it because this is just uh, right? All oh, right, this that's just C. This is C plus plus now. Idiot. C++ uh, no G++ G++ RPG no start dot CPP command not found but can be installed I don't need to install another command. I already have one. I can, we'll just use make. Make RPG start dot CPP. Bro. Fine. Paste. Put my mouse password in. Yes, by the way, this is how Linux works, boys. This is the next generation of computers. This is the best OS in the world. With the iOS just leading, they're just trailing behind. Sorry, they're not leading, they're just trailing behind. Just. The reason being is that they only have iOS and macOS. Over here, not only in Linux, do you have your Debian and stuff, you have flavors. I have the Ubuntu Studio, a flavor of the Debian Ubuntu. Of course, Debian also has other things. I think Kali is one of them as well, which is pretty epic. Okay, this is done. Uh, uh, what is it again? G++. This is like, I've been spending so long on this. It's better be a good video. CPP. Uh, did, I, did I hit Inclide? Idiot. Include. Sorry. Let's try that again. I'm copying and pasting because I can't be bothered to do that again and again and again. 
because I am an incapable man. Something else broke. All oh, right, I didn't save it. So, uh, save. What else broke exactly? Two or more data types in declaration of main. Void int. Ah. I'll get rid of that. Two or more data types in main. Expected. Nested. What? What do you need? Oh, we're using namespace. Right. I'll fix that real quick. Using name. Nope. Space. That. There we go. We're learning. We're learning. All right. Eight. Eight. We're learning. This is a long video. I'm going to 